Hello everyone, this is Super Dimensional Bun. Today I'll be reviewing Bandai's 144 scale non grade GP01 um, from the OVA series Gundam 0083. This kit was uh, produced in 1991 and retails for 700 yen. So let's take a closer look at it. This is uh, the original kit from the series. Closer look at the details here. Designed by Mac Cross designer Shoji Kawamori. This was his work on Gundam. And here's the back. Let's go ahead and take a look at the articulation in this kit. So his head's on it peg and polycap so it can spin 360 actually it could look up and down a little bit but it can't tilt side to side okay the arms well the bean sabers kind of get in the way but it could spin 360 now there's no waist articulation this is all one piece uh, same thing with the side skirt armors they don't they don't move out um, the arms only twist at the elbow, and the hands are also pegs on uh, in polycaps, so they can only spin around. And they don't they don't tilt left, right, or anything like that. Um, so the arms can bend outward only ninety degrees. Legs. Now these are also pegs on. Polycaps, so they don't twist at all either. Yeah. Could only bend that far forward. And <clears throat> that far back. Yeah. It's 1991, so obviously the articulation is not going to be that great. Oh, and last but not least, um, bending of the legs 90 degrees. Slightly forward, but you know, really not much. And then the feet. So these are also pegs on horizontal, um, horizontal pegs on, on polycaps. So let's look how much uh, front back motion. It's a decent amount there. But <coughs> going side to side, there really isn't much motion there. This is a pretty old kit. It tried staying true to the line art. But I don't know. <laughs> Bandai's interpretation of the line art at the time was wasn't very good. Okay, the skirt armor in the front doesn't move at all, so it's it's, it's one giant piece. The backpack just fell off. As you can see, it's just two circular pegs. Now this kit was only produced in two colors, blue and white. So everything, every other color here has been has been painted on. And completely paint this. Um, we'll get to that in a little minute. In a minute. So let's see what else. No, well, let's look at the accessories. Okay, first we got the shield. So this is fairly well, all right designed. I mean, nothing too special. It's just two pieces. The shield itself. You gotta paint the blue on it. And actually, this thing it was all blue. You need to paint the white on it. To tell you the truth. And, and there's a handle. Just connect this whole piece there and just slip it into the hand. Um, that's right, there's the beam sabers as well. You see, it's not quite, it's not like a cylinder, it's just a little, you just slip, pop it in like, like so, It'll stay in, but it doesn't stay in very well, obviously. Um, I mean, there are ways to fix that, but like putting in some, add, add a layer of paint in there or super glue or whatever. No, the handle of the shield just, just slides right into the hand. But, as you can see, just the, I don't know, chunk of the forearm, but the, you know, bumps up against the, I guess the mechanical part of the inside of the shield, and it can't hold it straight. So, it's not very well designed. Um, try doing it sideways. It probably works better that way. Actually, no, it doesn't. 
So, kind of failed there. Alright, we'll just leave that off for now. Okay, next we got, we also have a beam saber. It's pretty long, um, especially the handle. I, I mean, the beam saber itself is pretty short. The handle itself is long. Um, here is another regular high grade be um, beam saber. You can see the handle is shorter and the beam is longer. I'm not sure why this, they decided this was the proper length for a beam saber. Go and, just go ahead and slide that in. Now, it's a little tight. But there you go. It fits in all right. Okay. And we got this other hand that comes with it. This one is angled so it can hold the beam rifle, which is right here. Okay, let's then take this hand out. There's the peg, as I mentioned earlier, and there's the original, there's the hand with the beam saber. So it's a decent beam saber. Oh, you got a handle that that's articulated. Um, one thing that's kind of incorrect is the scope. It's uh, located directly on top. It's supposed to be slightly to the side. And also, this little bump here, I added it myself. Um, for just a concave disc, which you know isn't right. So, there. so let's see, the hand had to be angled because the bulkiness, the sheer bulkiness of the forearm, wouldn't allow um, the beam rifle to be held in it with the normal hand. So, and I came out with this angled hand just to uh, accommodate that. Not a very elegant um, solution. I mean, well, yeah, <laughs> doesn't look that nice. <laughs> anyway. um, so it can't really hel hold a, a beam saber very nicely, and it can't hold the uh, the beam rifle very nicely either. So there are a lot of cons going against this thing. Um, Do start with pros and cons. Well, you know, cons first, because um, there are many. So this kit was produced back in 1991. So you can't expect the high-grade standards that they have today on this particular kit. Um, details. I only detailed half the kit. So, I mean, I painted the whole thing, but except for, well, most of it at least. Um, you know, the details on the chest, all the green parts. The red, the grays, those are all painted, except for the blue and, and most of the white. So you got these also these beam savers. They, they keep popping out. Not not a very stable part. Backpacks are decent, except for the beam saber holders. Um, I mean this kit. It feels like they they rushed this kit or something. I mean. I don't know if they were trying to really stick with the uh, line art or, or something, but it's just clunky. It looks like a cheap toy. I mean, you got <clears throat> these forearms that really can't hold beam savers or, or, or shields very well. Um, shoulders look a little high. I don't know. Something about it just doesn't look right. Um, and then you got the legs. I mean, <clears throat> I guess it's just around the feet that are really bad too, because it, it can't swivel. I mean, it, it. Let's see. I mean, you have to pretty much put it the feet, the legs together to make it, you know, flat on its feet. Any tilting outwards, and you know, it's not, it's, it's not. Um, it's just the feet are lifted off, uh, angled, and all that stuff. Um, the leg articulation is bad. Nothing really twists. I mean, I guess it twists at the knee, but not very much at all. I mean, no, it doesn't. So never mind. Well, I, I mean, yeah, seven hundred yen. I mean, that I guess that's the pro to it. I mean, it's it's cheap. Um, but you know, back to the cons. I mean, you're gonna need a lot of work for this thing. Um, it's 
I mean, it's only two colors. You got to paint a lot just to detail it. I mean, if you don't mind painting, then sure, go for it. But I wouldn't buy this kit just for this, um, for GP01. I mean, it's it's a lot of work. In the end, I mean, it doesn't. It's not satisfying, you know. Seven hundred yen. I think you're better off spending maybe five hundred more yen to get the high grade version, which is right here. You can see better proportions, more detailed. I mean, it doesn't even have the zero one on the, sh on the shoulder. That comes as a sticker. Um, <clears throat> now, let's see. Let's try to go for the pros again. Um, it's a Shoji Kawamori kit, so you know if you love his designs, you know there's that. But I still have to say this is not a very good representation of it. Um, yeah, let's see. But the reason why I bought this kit is mainly because I was going for the full burner parts. And I'll go into that in another video. Okay, so let's see, let's see quick comparison here. The high grade's obviously <coughs> superior in almost every way. Um, yeah. I mean, let's see, what was it say? Um, yeah, I mean, if, if you ha had a chance, go for the high-grade version. I would not go for the non-grade version in almost any circumstances. I mean, I didn't buy it for it. Um, so, you know, that, that, that's my reason. The only reason that I have this is because these are the spare parts that come with the, the full burner version. So, just want to show you guys what it looks like. Um, <clears throat> do a quick comparison, and um, yeah. So, and there you have it. Um, don't buy this kit. I wouldn't. It feels like a waste of seven hundred yen. Oh, let me go back to another thing. It feels like a, a evolutionary backstep compared to the, any Gundam. Well, Gundam zero zero eight zero kits. This is a GP. This is a GM um, command space version. I mean, this one has some waist articulation. I mean, the proportions are better. I mean, I mean the leg articulation that's great, but as you can see, it's it just has better proportions. It can hold a beam rifle if I had it ready for you, but uh, it's, it's it's not there. But anyway, um, yeah. I mean, you got skirt armor that moves. You got elbows. Yeah, they bend ninety degrees as well. And twist and whatnot, but you know, it doesn't have any, it has just slightly better articulation and better proportions. So, anyway, so that, that's one of my beefs against this kit. <laughs> Don't buy this guy, <laughs> anyway. All right, I guess uh, this is. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I uh, hope you found it informative. So, uh, tune in again next time, and I will see you then.